Wow. Okay, guys, welcome to the second episode of Techish Chat. I uh, promise to have interviews with friends and people doing different stuff in technology, which most of them are already short. Uh, editing is a process, and I want it to be sort of a weekly thing. I know the last video was over a month ago, or slightly, ex- oh, it's exactly a month ago, but I gave it time so that it can syndicate to all platforms so you can find Techish Podcasts uh, or Techish Chats on literally every podcast platform. So whichever podcast app you use, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play Music, any podcast app you use, you can find Techish Chats there. And this is the second episode, so welcome to the show. Today, uh, I'm going to be alone talking about a couple of stuff that has happened that are sort of highlights of things I've either written about or commented about online. And then at the tail end, we're going to talk about uh, the benefits of buying a flagship phone or the disadvantages of buying a flagship phone. So the new data was the main thing uh, that has been going on in Kenya or not the main thing anyway. Something big that has been happening in the telecommunication industry is uh, Safaricom started sort of a prize war. I don't know if that's the right way to put it, but yeah, they started sort of a data war. I remember I had written a post about uh, bundles and asking if bundles should expire. This was a couple of hours after the Ghanaian government had announced that uh, bundles should not expire in the country and had ordered all telcos to uh, sort of comply to those laws. So I was doing an opinion piece asking myself and sort of posing the question, should data bundles expire in Kenya? Uh, I remember the conclusion was there should be uh, like clear guidelines on how to uh, how bundles are used. Uh, you should be notified before expiry and all that. And then literally a week later, somebody took uh, all telcos in Kenya to court. All of them were taken to court because of data bundles and uh, them having no expiry despite them being uh, uh, stuff that a customer has already bought. And then a day later, Safaricom launches an unexpired bundles uh, as they celebrated their 19th birthday. It was funny because people sort of thought the court, uh, the person going to court made uh, Safaricom launch their unexpiring bundles, but Safaricom says they had been working on that for over three weeks, so yeah. So just yesterday, Telcom has launched this new uh, what is it called? G bundle. It's G bundle here. Yeah. G bundle. I'm not sure the name. It's G bundle, I believe. Uh, you're supposed to get a thousand. You're going to get 30 GB for a thousand shillings, which is literally the cheapest uh, bundle option in the country currently because fiber offers you 25 GB for 1000 shillings. But there's a catch, like every bundle. You pay a thousand bob and then you get one GB daily which is a uh, thousand divided by 30, I don't know. But yeah, it's the cheapest bundle option in the country. And I know very many people have already signed up, very mo- many people have bought telecom lines or looked for the telecom lines that they didn't know where they had placed. And it's sort of ba- a bundle war. I'm waiting to see what Airtel says. And remember, telecom and Airtel are sort of merging. I'm waiting to see wh- how Airtel reacts. Equitel announced some data. It's a, a voice bundle for calls that comes with an insurance policy for anyone who is interested in such. But yeah, I'm waiting to see what uh, happens with the bundle bundle wars. The second thing is Xiaomi's ecosystem. Something I wrote about recently also is the Xiaomi ecosystem. Uh, I realized that I started with the light bulb and then I bought another light bulb and then I bought a phone and then I got the Mi Box, then I got the Mi Band, then I got a Bluetooth speaker. And all of a sudden I, would, I was in the Xiaomi ecosystem. Now I'm planning to buy so much from Xiaomi. The products are really good and they're also really affordable. But the ecosystem is not like uh, the Apple ecosystem where you get locked in. I've linked that article in the description. Uh, you, uh, what do you think of the Xiaomi ecosystem? Because they have an array of products. Literally Xiaomi has everything from umbrellas to rice cookers to t-shirts to clothes, I don't know, to laptops, to tablets, to phones. I don't think there's another company that can boast of having so much home smart appliances like Xiaomi does. So that's another topic that I felt 
is worth talking about so check out the article and share online your thoughts on the Xiaomi ecosystem number 3 the third thing that is also worth talking about is something uh that has been a big topic in the US uh Facebook has the uh, CEO of Facebook Mark Zuckerberg said they will allow political ads on their platform even if these political ads are blunt, blatantly lies which raised many issues because Facebook was literally saying we will take money from anyone even if they are lying then yesterday night uh, uh CEO Twitter Jack Dorsey said Twitter will no longer accept political adverts and it's going to be a big conversation because uh, Twitter is saying they'll not take money from anyone for any political advert there's some uh, what are they called there's some re- uh, certain times when they'll take money from po- for political ads and this will include ads that call people to vote or call people to come together and do a cause in something but they'll not take money from any politicians for their adverts which is a big thing because that sort of takes Twitter away the Twitter company away from politics and away from fact checking politics and all that which is a big problem for Facebook and I think Twitter's direction is the best way because having those political campaigns and having them have lies and being on your platform is really bad for any company and I don't know why Zuckerberg didn't think of it that way I guess it's because they make a lot of money from ads on Facebook or it's just because they agreed I don't I don't understand because why would you say we will take money from anyone even if they're lying so that will be a topic uh, I'm sure will be a big topic that will be talked about in the coming days and I'm looking forward to see what Facebook how Facebook reacts to Twitter's decision number 4 techno common 12 something else uh, that has happened uh, in the span of this long period I haven't done the podcast I did a review of the Techno Common 12 which you can read it's linked down something I really love about Transition as a company is their approach to budget the budget segment yes you can fault them for old processors you can fault them for very bad using uh, experience with their with their launches or are they called their skins the skins they put on top of 100 you can fault them for the bad processor and the skins they put on top of 100 but something that excites me with the company is that they sort of always start this war where you get very good devices at very low price points the techno common 12 series has three phones techno common 12 pro techno, um, techno common 12 and the techno common 12 air The Techno Common 12 Air starts at 13,000 Kenya shillings, which is about 130 US dollars. Has a punch hole display something we thought was a reserve for flagship devices. Uh comes with 3 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of internal storage. There's a triple camera setup I, get, I believe on all devices. The Techno Common 12, the one that I was reviewing starts at 15,000, you get 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of internal storage. I don't think there's another phone from Samsung or Huawei or other big manufacturers that gives you so, those sort of specs then the Techno Common 12 Pro sets at 19000 has an in display fingerprint scanner has an AMOLED display looks really good and at 19000 with an in display fingerprint scanner i don't think there's another uh, any other phone from a big company sort of having that feature so techno is sort of doing this uh competition where it gives you more fe- it it has been going on and this year it's even stronger with the Techno Common 12 series and I'm glad because they're good phones. Uh the cameras are not really good. The cameras are not good at all in some in some situations the cameras are not good at all, especially when it becomes low and when it comes to low light and all that. But they have AR so you can take sort of funny selfies with uh characters and pictures with yeah. They're doing quite a, a lot, but my problem with them is the user experience is still very bad. iOS really sucks you can read my review there's a lot of adverts there's a lot of notification there's a lot of blot where you're not sure about your privacy you don't you're not sure of what sort of uh, data of yours could be collected with all these extra apps that you don't need so check out the review number 5 Infinix Hot 8 another device that I'm reviewing from Transition is the Infinix Hot 8 the impressions uh, the first impressions video and article are up um 
the interest for the hotel actually has proven to be quite massive uh, because for 10,000 Kenya shillings uh, you're getting 2 gigs of RAM, that's 2 gigs of internal storage, a triple camera setup that I'm sure it has an issue because only the main camera seems to be working, the UI doesn't allow you to switch between the lenses. I don't know what the extra lenses are doing but the full review is coming up soon. It has a 5000 million battery. There's three models for the Infinix of 8, the 9K version, 10K version and an 11K version. All come with 5000 million battery. I did a battery test which is dropping soon and I got 16 hours on load. So the phone was on for 16 hours performing certain tasks and it just lasted like it was the battery is good okay to the main topic I wanted to talk about or sort of the main conversation for this episode should you buy an expensive phone or an expensive flagship phone or should you get a good mid-ranger and I guess I already have the answer to this Personally, I'm using the uh, Samsung Galaxy Note 10 thanks to Samsung Kenya and it's a really, 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 really good phone. Like, it's a really, really good phone. It's 120,000 Kenya shillings, first of all, so it's very expensive. But at that cost, you're getting the best display on a phone you're getting. It's not the best because there's the OnePlus 7 and other 90 hertz display which every reviewer because i haven't used a 90 hertz display every reviewer claims a 90 hertz display is superior i'm yet to see but yeah you, you're getting a very good display you're getting waterproof you uh waterproof up a waterproof phone you're getting a very very good performance you're getting very good battery life with an extra large battery on the phone you're just getting an all-round really good phone in terms of cameras performance and something i haven't talked about that i'm yet i'm planning on writing about is how Samsung's One UI is just superior to almost every other Android skin out here. So yeah, you're getting a, an all-around really good phone. But then you're thinking, uh, something like Realme, the company that broke off Oppo, is selling a $450 smartphone that's like... A, it's like f three times cheaper or I don't know. Yeah, $450 versus uh, $1,120 you, you can see. It's a really cheap phone with sort of the same specs as the Galaxy Note 10, uh, uh, Note 10 Plus, a 90 hertz display, a really fast charger. And you're wondering, uh, should you get a very expensive phone or should you get a mid-ranger? And you're living uh, at a time where for even 24,000, 25,000, 30,000, you can get very good specs or even less than 20,000 for 15,000. Like I'm talking, you can get for like I'm talking of the Techno Common 12, you can get 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage when Google is selling a phone for $899 for with 64 gigs of RAM uh, storage anyway. So should you get these cheap uh, or affordable phones or should you go for a higher end phone? Personally, I think if you can afford the very high end phone, if you can afford it, I know I can't afford it, but if you can afford a very high end phone, it's a really, 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 really good experience. But make sure you're getting a phone not just because you can afford it, but because it is of value to you. How do I, how, how do I mean? There's no need to get the most expensive phone if all you'll do with it is social media and a couple of apps because it will be sort of a waste of money. I don't know. Why should you get the best camera, the iPhone 11 Pro, because everybody agrees it's the best camera, every reviewer, I'm yet to even touch it. But why should you get it if all you'll do is Twitter and Facebook? It's your money, yes, but it doesn't make sense to just carry that power if you could spend that money on something that does Twitter and social media very well, just social media and all that very well. But yeah, it also depends on one's, uh, what excites you if it makes you happy to get a very expensive phone and you can afford it that's a good thing because there's also the value of happiness <laughs> but if but if you're just looking for a phone that can handle your day-to-day -day tasks most mid-ranges and most uh, budget phones are really good at that currently because the cheap phones have gotten so good and also so affordable yeah so yeah, my conclusion on that question on should you get a flagship phone or should you get a mid-ranger is get something that suits you. If you want the best cameras and if you want the best experience and if you can afford it, get the flagship phone because they're really good. 
but if you want something that handles your days to day tasks you want to save money on a phone you're buying get a good phone with a good battery yeah and that will handle all your tasks well the next episode should be an interview with a friend of mine about what inspires them to do what they're doing and they're doing something big uh, i hope you can share this with everyone who would love to listen or watch i don't know if most of you watch it or listen but there's a lot of interest in the space so i'll continue making this and thanks for your support uh should you sub- yeah, subscribe and if you're using a podcast app where you can review the podcast review it and if you can share it with anyone who is interested please share it i think i've already said that bye